Welcome to WTIN. We're here today in conversation with Dr. Tim Phillips, the Managing Director of IMI Europe, to talk about recent developments in inkjet technology and its potential impact on textile applications. Tim, uh, IMI Europe recently held a conference for inkjet ink developers. What was most interesting in your mind from that? Well, there were a lot of interesting things, actually, but um, it, it was really covering quite a broad range of technology, both on the uh, material side, so materials and additives for ink, but also the technology for characterizing inks um, and processing them as well. Um, and then a lot, of, a lot of things about the quality of dispersions, both creating dispersions and, and measuring them. Um, and then uh, quite a lot of other areas as well, um, some of the equipment that's needed for, for ink development. So probably not one thing that, that stands out, but a lot of very interesting uh, topics that the, the people at the conference found very useful. I know that um, in the textile field, in most applications, UV inks have not really been applicable because of their potential to cause irritation on the skin. That's right. Yeah. But I know there was a presentation on electron beam curing, uh, mm -hmm. which eliminates the need for a photo initiator. From your assessment of, of the content of that, have we got something there that might have broader textile application? I think e-beam curing does have relevance, um, but I also think you know there are big strides being made on on the material side and also the processing side for, for UV or, or radiation curing more generally, which has quite a lot of promise for textiles. A lot of that focus is coming from food packaging, but I think a lot of the benefits that come from, from that application will be relevant to, to textiles as well. Is there anything currently in application in the broader inkjet industry, especially in industrial print, um, which we haven't seen in textiles yet, but which you think is going to make its way into this market? I think the biggest area is in dispersions, and obviously um, pigmented inks are starting to make uh, inroads into the textile market, but at, at a relatively low level at the moment, whereas in, in some other applications they're completely dominant. Um, and a lot of the learning about dispersion quality and stability um, is, is perhaps an area that the textile market will benefit from over the next, the next few years. So we know that um, historically um, it's been difficult in uh, textile industrial print heads to, to get the colour saturation that was required, as well as issues of runnability. Yes. Is some of the new chemistry that you're seeing in inks um, likely to help overcome these barriers? I, I think it enables you to push that envelope further. Uh, there's always a trade-off to a certain extent between colour, strength and runnability. But yeah, the new, the new chemistry and new techniques enables you to push that, that envelope further. Okay. In the New technology that you've seen that's been presented at IMI Europe mm -hmm. events, um, can you point to specific technologies that you've seen or specific manufacturers who've got a product which you think um, might have some application in textiles? Um, I, I think, well, there are, there are as, as we've seen, a few new print heads that are being, being announced, um, or, or some have been announced already, some are about to be announced, which may well have relevance for the textile industry, um, you know, focused on, on printing with water-based uh, inks. Um, on the, the the ink side, there are a number of product announcements, but behind that, the materials companies like like BASF and like um, IGM resins and people like that are, are are working hard on enabling the ink companies to do a to do a better job in terms of stability and quality and color strength and these kinds of things. And we've seen quite a lot of new players come into the textile market over the last two to three years. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess that that number is going to grow. As time goes by. I, I, I can only see it growing because everyone sees textiles as the growing application area for digital print. Um, so that number is only going to go up. In the, in the broader industrial market, clearly there are already areas of, uh, of development and market expansion that are being experienced. But for a lot of these inkjet print head people, their core market of um, office printing, commercial printing, much of that I think is already quite saturated. Is that right? To a certain extent it is, although though in, in commercial print there is still um, a lot of growth potential. Um, the, the kind of office print is very much saturated uh, now and so people that are big in those areas and, and wide format print as well are looking for, for new areas. So that explains why people have been quite keen to, to pick up on the growth in textiles and move into that area. Yes, yes that's right. IMI Europe has, has formed a, a partnership with WTN. Yeah. Um, to cooperate on, on events uh, and on information relative to technology in the textile market. Mm -hmm. um, how do you perceive that partnership developing? Well, I think it's, I think it's a great partnership for both companies. Um, obviously, 
digital textiles, as we said, is a growth area for inkjet. Um, so in a way, there's a there's a nice synergy between the technology side and the and the application um, growing, and and obviously that growth appears to be have many more years of of uh, exciting times to come. Um, on the company side, I think both companies have a lot of strengths, um, and those strengths are quite complementary. So um, you know, obviously, we have a few things that we're already talking about, and and hopefully in in two or three years time, uh, the world will be our oyster. And you have a number of events coming up in the remainder of this year, starting right. with the summer school and later on uh, another inkjet conference in Europe. Can you tell us a bit about what those are going to contain and what might be interesting for potential visitors to those events? Yes, absolutely. So we have our, our inkjet summer school, which is in Heidelberg in Germany um, in June, um, and that's got six technical courses um, that are covering quite a broad range. So there's an introduction to inkjet technology. There's courses on ink characterization and ink manufacturing. Uh, there's also a course on digital textile printing and one on functional printing and then one on uh, kind of very quite a technical course on how print heads work so there's a you know quite a wide variety of, of things that people can cover there from a technical side and then we have our our main event um, at the end of november beginning of december which we call digital print europe and that includes our main uh, digital printing conference which covers a broad range of applications but will include digital textiles and then we're running some um, other subsidiary events along with that, um, including the Inkjet Academy um, and what we call Market Reports Live. So that's um, areas of the market that are of interest. And is the main audience for that event later in the year, is that the technology integrators and the technology developers that you... Are they the people you expect to the, the The main audience, yes, yeah, sort of senior strategic people within the development industry, um, but also um, end users who are looking to understand how the industry works, how the technology works at a, at a high level. So while the summer school is very much a technical event, that one is a more of a strategic event. Okay, it'll be interesting to see what comes up. Thank you, Absolutely. Tim. Absolutely. Thank you very much.